Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to add and organize citations in your Zotero library. This will be really useful when you go to write bibliographies. It means that you will be able to create a bibliography with a single click if you have all of your citations in Zotero. So my library and group libraries are organized with a folder structure. And so to create a folder or what's called a collection Zotero, you can right click on my library and go to new collection. And I'm going to call this neuroscience. You can also create new collections by going to file and selecting new collection here. And you would do it the same way in a group library as well. So again, remember that my library and group libraries work very similarly. So go here and go to new collection. Now you can create sub collections. So you can start to get these um, hierarchical folder structures. And this helps keep everything organized. And one thing I really want to suggest is that you make sure that as you add citations to Zotero, they end up in a folder. So for example, if you click on unfiled items, this is going to show you any item that did not make it into a folder. And so you can see that I have 352. And the reason that this is really not good is that I actually have no idea what these are. I don't know which project they belong to. It would be very hard for me to find these in my Zotero library. So this is an example of something you really want to try to avoid in Zotero and make sure that as you do your lit searching, you are getting all of the items into the proper folders. Now, I'm going to be doing some lit searching related to inhibitory circuits. So I am going to select that sub collection. And there are a few different ways that you can get items into your Zotero library. One is that you can simply drag and drop PDFs from your computer. So here I have a PDF folder on my desktop and I am just going to drag and drop that right into Zotero. Okay, finish uploading those. I'm also going to do some lip searching on PubMed. Now I'm using PubMed database as an example, but you could do this in any database, Google Scholar or even Google. So um, here I find an article that looks interesting and I am going to save it by going up to the Zotero icon in my browser. This was the browser connector that you downloaded when you installed Zotero. And I click on it and it's going to save to inhibitory circuits because that is the folder I already selected in Zotero. But if this was not the right place, you could change the folder here. And you want to just give it a few seconds to let it fully save um, before you navigate away from this web page. So if I go to Zotero, I should be able to see that now that is that item there. Now, another nice option is that you can actually select multiple items at once. So if I am on a database or Google Scholar page with multiple items, now I see that the Zotero icon looks like a little folder and I can select a subset of these or all of them and save them at once. So again, I'm just gonna give it a few seconds to work. Um, Another thing that I can do is I can save websites. And so this is similar to how people bookmark in web browsers. So this is a popular neuroscience resource, the Allen Brain Map, and I am going to save this to my Zotero folder as well. So I can remember to take a look at this later. Now, if I go to Zotero, Um, here I can see that there are many items now in my inhibitory circuits folder. And these top level items are called the parent item. If I click on them, I see what is called metadata over here on the right. 
side of my screen. And so this is all of the citation information that you typically need to write a bibliography. Um, one thing to know is that if you navigate away from those web pages too quickly, it might not have time to fully capture all of this. So it's important to take a look at it and make sure that it looks relatively complete. Um, if there was a field that you needed for a bibliography, you can also click on these and manually enter them. Um, but you can see that this does look fairly complete. Some of these fields are not necessary for a bibliography. And so this does look like it loaded correctly. If I click on the arrow um, on the parent item, it will, in many cases, um, show me the full text. So it's not always able to capture the PDF, but in most many cases it can, especially for um, biology research, um, because a lot of this content is open access. So if I click on this, I can see um, a PDF here, and I could read the PDF in my Zotero library if I wanted to, or download it. Um, if your PDFs, if you do not see a PDF, this is an example of one where it was not able to capture the PDF. Um, you can also, like I said, drag and drop PDFs in here. But even without the PDF, it is still able to capture the citation information. And that is what you need for the bibliography. So you don't need the PDFs or the full text for the bibliographies. It's just nice to have them in here if you want to read them in one place. Um, again, if something looks missing, you can try to manually sync your Zotero library. Um, when I did that, it actually navigated away from my inhibitory circuits folder. So I'm going to go back there. Um, and so there are actually other ways you can get content into Zotero as well, but this, these are kind of the, the basic and kind of more popular ways um, people put content in here as they're lit searching.